Hi everyone, welcome back to our second video on refraction. In today's video we're going to be looking at Snell's law and we're also going to be recapping some of the important concepts of uh, refraction. Let me just remind you that refraction occurs any time that a wave passes from one medium to the other. The direction of the wave is going to change as we can see that we have some white light over here and uh, we can see that it's bending as it's entering the glass then it's bending once again in the opposite direction once it enters the air from the glass the speed of the individual waves will also change and this is governed by the refractive index, index equation n is equal to c over v just rearranging for the uh, velocity of the wave in a particular medium we can see that uh, it will be equal to c, which is the speed of light in a vacuum, divided by the refractive index. Because the refractive index of all substances is greater than 1, this would mean that the speed of light will be slowing down in general as it enters a medium of higher optical density. Now, the speed of light or the speed of any wave is also given by the famous equation that, which is the wave equation, that the speed of a wave is equal to its frequency multiplied by the wavelength. Now, because the speed of light decreases, one of those quantities will have to change, or both of those quantities will have to change. What actually happens is that the wavelength decreases, but the frequency remains constant. And this is a favorite exam question that in refraction, frequency will be remaining a constant. This is really, really important. Once again, let me just write this over here that the frequency f is equal to a constant. Now, how do we know how much will each individual ray actually bend when it passes from one medium to the other? Let's have a look at the law of refraction also known as Snell's law. The rule that will enable us to draw the trajectory of this light ray is as follows. If a light ray goes from a medium of a lower refractive index to a medium of a higher refractive index, the ray will bend towards the normal. The normal is just a line which is perpendicular to the surface. For instance, this ray over here, if there was no glass block in front of it, will just carry on along a straight line. But that's not the case. There is a material of a higher refractive index, so it will tend to bend towards the normal at a certain angle, like so. On the other hand, if a light ray is going from a medium of a higher refractive index to a medium of a lower refractive index, such as air, for instance, it will bend away from the normal. For instance, this light ray over here will no longer carry on in a straight line, but will bend away from the normal and we can draw this like so. So we can see that this ray has now bent away from the normal. Now how can we find this angle theta 2? In order to do so let's define a couple of uh, angles over here. I'm going to call my angle of incidence theta 1. Know that the angle of incidence is the angle between the light ray and the normal. A couple of times they might try and trick you in a question by giving you this angle over here. So the way we would uh, find the angle of incidence in that case would be to subtract this angle from 90. But once again, the angle of incidence is the angle between the light ray and the normal. 
Snell's law says that the product of the refractive index multiplied by the sine of the angle is equal to a constant. This is what's given in our formula booklets. Remember, every time we are uh, given that some product is a constant, we can rewrite the same equation as n1 sine theta 1 is equal to n2 sine theta 2. In this case, theta 1 is our angle of incidence and theta 2 is the angle of refraction. And this is another way that we can write Snell's law. Let's see if we can calculate our angle of refraction. Let's say that our angle of incidence is, this looks like 40 degrees. So let's say our angle of incidence is 40 degrees. Can you calculate the angle of refraction? This will be a perfect opportunity for you guys to pause this video and solve this problem with all the information that has been given on the board. Notice that in this equation, we know what n1 is, that is just equal to 1. We know what the angle of incidence is, this is equal to 40 degrees. We know what n2 is, this is 1.5. So all we need to do is rearrange for sine theta 2 and then for theta 2 as well. So let's start off, start off by rearranging for the sine. So sine of the angle of refraction will be equal to n1 sine theta 1 divided by n2. We need to take the inverse sine now, so theta 2 will be equal to the inverse sine of n1 sine theta 1 divided by n2, like so. And now we can start plugging in some numbers. Theta 2 will be equal to the inverse sine of n1, which is just equal to 1, times sine of 40 degrees divided by n2, which is equal to 1.5, which is equal to 25 degrees. So the value of our angle of refraction is 25 degrees. Okay, folks, so we've learned quite a lot in, uh, in this video. Let's just quickly recap some of the main points that we have learned today. First off, whenever refraction occurs, the frequency of the actual um, wave remains the same. However, the wavelength changes. Second of all, when a ray goes from a lower refractive index to a higher refractive index, it will bend towards the normal. If a ray goes from a higher refractive index to a lower refractive index, it will bend away from the normal. We determine the angle using Snell's law, which is that n times sine theta is equal to a constant, where um, we can rewrite this as n1 sine theta 1 is equal to n2 sine theta 2, and we can use that to calculate any of the and unknown angles depending on what we are given in this question. Okay folks, so hopefully you found this online lesson on refraction quite useful. If there are any questions, feel free to drop a comment and thank you very much for watching.